My very good friends at Volkswagen have teamed up with Australia's premier antique bumper bar factory in beautiful scenic Clayton. They've made their outdated death trap dual cab even faster. Well done, you chumps. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously. Or you can just click the car that's up there now, dude. Death Trap Amarok in just a sec. But first, a quick shout out to brilliant Australian YouTuber and serial blue singlet four-wheel drive modifier, Jebri's Gibberish. Dear Jebri, do convey my warmest regards to your parents, Mr. and Mrs. Gibberish. Please tell them I said you turned out okay, son. Jebri, I bet he can fight. He's taken issue with me and done a pretty solid piss take right down to the drill press sitting on milk crates and the token WD. Yes. You should watch. Show Jebri some YouTube love. Link up there. Just do it platonically, if you don't mind, like pants on for once. He makes some good points, actually, so yeah, dude, hashtag respect. In a sense, this is also a public service announcement aimed at Australia's biggest political soft cock sook, John Barillaro, personal opinion, who is also the deputy premier of New South Shitsville. Dear John, mate, see... It is possible to rise above people taking the piss out of you endlessly. In fact, it's easy. Like, there's a gulf between somebody taking the piss and someone taking your wallet. <coughs> they can agree. I mean, imagine the kind of unmitigated world-class soft cock sook I would appear to be, in the minds of many, if I reported Mr. and Mrs. Gibberish's son to the... I don't know, fixated persons unit, and then had him arrested violently by three tactical wombats, just because he hurt my feelings. And imagine if I then appeared to fib ever so slightly about my involvement in that nasty business to Tom Connell on Sky News. That's kind of a bad look in the domain of integrity, I'd suggest. Perhaps I'm just misreading it, though. Who knows? Anyway, well done, Jeb, if I may call you that. I loved your report, mate. Please take the piss out of me again, whenever and wherever it suits you. Let us even get together for a beer sometime. We can discuss everything we have in common, which shouldn't take too long. And my gift to you will be, I won't be there. Now, Volkswagen. Volkswagen is, of course, the automotive industry equivalent of John Barillaro, in my view. Except for that nasty business behind the shed in 2015, with the cheating software. But at least they have spent millions recently on an hilariously nauseating ad campaign, which appears to me to have been shot on something like a Red or an Alexa, like with a proper director... As I understand it, you weren't even allowed on set without a ponytail and a chai latte in hand. You gotta see it to believe it. This advertising travesty takes us on a journey to an entirely fake place. Deep in the Dingo Piss Creek World Heritage hinterland called Walkinshaw Station. Yes. Where wild Amoroks had taken off the boat from Argentina, where they are in fact manufactured, that's according to Red Book, and broken in, just like the cult from Old Regret. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. Yeah, it's that stereotypically jingoistically bad. It's appalling. But there is lots of backlit dust, and they even also laser cut that special sign to legitimise the outright vomit-inducing wank factor of the fakeness. And that's always nice. Visit Walkinshaw Station, explore a world like no other, and discover how the Amarok V6 wank series is taken from wild to Walkinshaw. I'm feeling it. Like, I really am, and 
that's how you know it's real. Let us visit a world like no other. Well could I do with some of that here on lockdown. I am rather sick of the world the way it is with Osama bin Chicken making up arbitrary new rules for us all to follow every day at 10.55am, assisted diligently by Big Sook Six, who's a bit too busy suing a comedian who hurt his feelings to contribute all that much in the pandemic management domain, which is quite understandable. Hashtag priority. Well done. Senior state leadership team, good to see the lockdown working, cases under control. Love your work. Nice eulogy for the economy too. Small business everywhere thanks you sincerely for your service. So, a world unlike this one would be quite refreshing. I'm in. Walkinshaw Station pays homage, of course, to the former HSV bumper bar factory nestled in beautiful scenic Clayton in Melbourne. Gateway to... This pile of rotting pallets right next door to its heritage-listed bumper bar production line. Yes. It is actually right there on that very street. Image from Google Street View this morning. And that's basically reality versus marketing in microcosm right there. Ready for anything. They might be reared for the road, but their suspension has been tuned to tackle any terrain. The 3,500 kilo Volkswagen dudes. Look, in the spirit of outright helpfulness, for which I am renowned, you might as well get the metric system right in your communications. There's no commas until you get to 10,000, okay? Like, I'll fix it for you. You're welcome. Do carry on. Ready for anything. They might be reared for the road, but their suspension has been tuned to tackle any terrain. The 3,500 kilogram braked towing capacity. <sighs> Volkswagen dudes, look. In the spirit of promoting literacy more broadly in society, you incompetent communications assholes, personal opinion, need to realise that braked towing capacity is simply not a proper noun. So allow me to fix that also. Ready for anything. They might be reared for the road, but their suspension has been tuned to tackle any terrain. The 3,500 kilo brake towing capacity means you don't have to be shy when you load them up either. So let me detain you briefly on this, you Volkswagen dicks, personal opinion. According to the official shitbox Amarok 580S specifications on your website, the unladen weight, including those beautiful new wheel arch flares, is 2,284 kilos, so 2,284 kilos unladen. And the gross combination mass is 6,000 kilos. And you can see the problem with this, right? If I hitch up my distinctive three and a half ton aluminium chitois to my ultimate small penis Amarok 580S, then in order not to exceed the GCM limitation of six tons, I can only carry, uh, well, that's, uh, well, it's 6,000 minus three and a half tons for the Chitois, which is two and a half thousand minus, uh, 2,284, which is, uh, hmm, Jesus, that can't be right, can it, um? According to arithmetic, that's not funny, you can only carry 216 kilos in the vehicle before it's overloaded. That's just like me and the uh, vegetables. Like You've got to get that soluble fibre somehow, dude. Plus, your Tiffany from the office and the fake choosies, change of underwear, uh, spare batteries, lube, picnic blanket, inflatable hot tub. Empty, plus, uh, I don't know, something in the back, small pallet of rocking or shit or something of that nature. And when I add all of that up, I don't actually think we can carry all of that. So we might have to make sacrifices. I friggin' hate that. 
The 3,500 kilo brake towing capacity means you don't have to be shy when you load them up either. It's amazing to me how the ACCC can sleep through a volley of bullshit that loud. That's a skill. That claim, right, it's simply untrue because you need to reduce the fucking payload by 75% when you, quote, load them up with a 3,500 kilo, no comma, trailer. Jesus. So I'd say that was being fairly shy with the load right there. And here's my big problem, okay? This ready for anything bullshit statement. Like, yeah, ready for anything except crashing, okay? See, as a discerning automotive consumer, one of the most valuable skills that you should develop right now is the ability to listen really, really hard for everything that car makers do not say in the brochure because it often speaks volumes about the product and it is a real attack by stealth. See, if you go to the official Dingo Piss Walkinshaw Amarok Bumper Bar Station webpage, once you're done dry retching from the caricature of fabled stray and jingoistic crap orbiting this Argentinian-made museum exhibit. You can also download a 16-page brochure if you need you know, more. You can even print it out like, I don't know, perhaps the kindling got all wet. Whatever. And you know what's missing from both of these quote-unquote resources? Safety. They do not talk about it at all. And I'd suggest that's not an arbitrary exclusion, okay? This vehicle is a proper, objective safety shitbox. I mean, they are very quick to appeal to the man of small, let's say, zucchini, with the awful bonnet decals and the claims of 0 to 107.3 with 200 kilowatts, but not for more than 10 seconds because... Overboost. And 10 seconds is actually a very long time, Tiffany. I'll have you know. But no safety pages, no safety details at all, not even in the specification fine print. And that must be for a reason, right? And I'd suggest the reason is you can forget all about advanced safety features. This $90,000 Argentinian shitbox does not even have side impact airbag head protection for the kiddies sitting in row two. 90 grand in 2021. And this can be confirmed very easily by you at redbook.com.au, which lists all of the standard equipment. Airbag driver, airbag passenger, that means two frontal airbags. Airbag side for first row occupants, brackets, front. And that's kind of it in the domain of airbags. So if you're a kid sitting in row two and daddy hits a tree when he skids sideways because he just overcooked it on a dirt road, or if you get T-boned at an intersection on the way to school or something, you are friggin' on your own. Thanks a lot, Volkswagen. As a parent, how would you ever forgive yourself? An ANCAP. Well done there, you chumps. ANCAP's testing of Amarok is 10 long years out of date, 10 years. If you go to ANCAP's website today and you search for Volkswagen current models, it will return a five-star safety rating for Amarok which is a gross misrepresentation of the actual relative safety performance on offer if you buy an Amarok today compared with any other new popular dual cab ute. If they tested that shitbox Amarok today, it would be lucky to receive a one star rating. One, if the wind was blowing in the right direction that day. The fact that you have to be quite clued up and know exactly what to look for to join these dots as a consumer is an informational disgrace. In 2016, like five years ago, one year after Lenny Kravitz was so memorably commissioned as a kind of dieselgate no more gaps in New York, and five years after ANCAP awarded Amarok five stars, Senior Volkswagen assholes launched the mighty V6 Amarok, okay? Move over, Linda Lovelace, because the press just gagged on it. 
At the launch, a dude from Car Advice, which is now dead, of course, because Costello's cockheads have always been kind of hazy about competent decision-making. Well, he asked Dr. Jean Michel, who is essentially a fairly serious Volkswagen international sales wonk, about the glaringly absent Amarok Row 2 airbags. As in, glaringly absent from that platform when viewed through the prism of 2016 safety standards, okay? And bear in mind, this was not some sort of bounce, like they hardly jammed a camera in his face in the car park of some sort of seedy Wolfsburg bondage parlour. It was at a sanctioned media event. Mr. Michelle responded, We are working on it. And guess what? They're still working on it, apparently. It is taking quite some time, isn't it? And I'd further suggest the integration of life-saving technology such as this is actually well above the pay grade of the bumper bar factory behind that pile of rotting pallets in Clayton. I mean, Walkinshaw Station. What I'm saying is, do not be seduced by this bullshit advertising campaign. Like, yeah, it's a quick ute and it looks tits, but Amarok is about as authentically Australian as anything else imported from Argentina, and it's patently unsafe in relative terms. If you're becoming psychologically engorged at the prospect and you're preparing to hump a Volkswagen dealer's leg enthusiastically in order to procure one, and if you've got kids, do not do this to them, would be my advice. Like, it's 2021. Kids in row two deserve life-saving head protection, okay? So they can take care of you. They can grow and live on to become adults and take care of you in your 80s or something. And you can inflict yourself upon them while you become infirm. And then you can write a check for your own funeral and it can friggin' bounce or something. Everyone wants that. And of course every other mainstream dual cab ute offers this level of protection. Personally, you know, at the risk of being serious about anything, I wonder how many families are buying into this bullshit marketing on the default expectation that this is some sort of prestige European vehicle and therefore their kids are protected and unwittingly these people might be putting the most precious cargo they will ever carry at risk. And remember that this is a fact. That protection is not there. It's not my opinion. This is one of those areas, I guess, where ignorance might end up certainly not being bliss. <laughs>